Good morning, Enid. Thank you for joining us. It's 7.30 on this Thursday, May 30th, and uh, thank you for uh, taking time out of your morning. Today is all about Race for Jace. We've got a great event coming up on Saturday, and we've got two special guests in the studio today to talk about that event. But right now, I encourage you to uh, get a cup of coffee, join us for the next 30 minutes, because we've got news, weather, sports, and then we will introduce you to, I'm sure, Jace will show up here in a little bit. <laughs> and uh, we are live streaming around the globe at enatv.org. And if you have cable television, you can see us on channel 12 and also in high definition 112. Aaron's here, I'm here, Jesse's here. We're glad that you're with us on Good Morning Enid. It is time to rise and shine. Good morning, Enid. Thank you so much for joining us today. It looks like the sun might actually come out for us today. It's it going to be a gorgeous day. It looks like it is going to be a, a really beautiful day out there. Since the there's birds. no more school, I guess we have to do current. Well, currents. the birds are singing, so they're glad school's out, I yes, guess. Yes, definitely. I'm sure Jace is excited that school's out for summer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, look, <laughs> looks like the current temperature is 52 degrees right now. Going to get up to a high later on today of 80 degrees. And if you look at that picture, it is going to be sunny all day. Winds out of the northwest to the west of 5 to 10 miles an hour. So it is going to be absolutely beautiful today. And anytime we have the winds out of the north, that usually means lower humidity. So perfect lawn mowing weather. <laughs> we, it's been raining forever, and here's a chance to catch up a little bit. Speaking of lawn mowing weather, maybe the weekend you have, uh, besides race for Jace, you have some yard work to do. We'll see what the three-day forecast looks like. And uh, you can see, finally, end of May, we're going to be in the lower 80s and 60s for the low. That's pretty typical for late May, early June. I just can't believe we're already talking June. This year is really going by. And then there's a chance of thunderstorms on Saturday and Sunday. Otherwise, it looks really good for all types of events. And in Enon, Oklahoma, there are numerous events, and we'll find out more about those in just a few moments. We have Jesse Dershom with us. Jesse, thank you for joining us this morning. We're going to put you to work. We need to right. find out about some record temps on this day back in history, so let's see what happened. All right, the record high was 104 degrees in 1985, and low was 47 degrees in 1947. Whoa. And now that's the difference. Yeah. 104 to 47? Yeah. It's a big spread. <laughs> okay, so what state would I be in with that difference? Huh, must be Oklahoma. So <laughs> it's just amazing. And 85, wow, 140 degrees. That's a hot day. Yeah. <laughs> goodness, goodness. Uh, if you have any photos from graduation, school is out, summer parties, picnics, cookouts, um, whatever the event might be, you can send them to gme at enid.org. Jesse, you can send us some pictures for, from the race for Jace event on Saturday and we'll put them on Good Morning Enid next week. Yeah. But anyone can send us photos of what's going on in their lives at gme at enid.org. So, well, before we get to what's happening, I just want to say congratulations to the uh, University of Oklahoma women's softball team and Oklahoma State University women's softball team. They're in the College World Series and that gets underway today down in Oklahoma City. So, uh, I know women's softball and collegiate level is pretty popular so for two state schools to be in the world series is pretty uh popular aaron are you uh, interested in the nba playoffs i can't say basketball is one of my favorite sports jesse but. how about you <laughs> who's playing tonight and that's the question oh. who's playing this is the nba finals okay um, this is a test the golden state there you go and who else <laughs> oh my <laughs> husband will be so mad i don't know this the warriors that's Golden State Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the other team. <laughs> Toronto. Okay, well. The Raptors. Yeah. So anyway, the NBA finally. That's the longest season in the world. But they're finally <laughs> getting to the last two teams. That starts tonight. So I just wanted to mention that that's kind of what's happening in the sports realm. Well, we always turn to Erin because she always keeps us informed on what's happening in Enid. And there's always this laundry list of things. So let's find out what's happening. Thanks, Steve. There's a bunch going on, and we have Race for Jace, which 
Jesse and Jace are here to talk about in a little bit. But starting us off, we have the Enid Shrine Poker Run this Saturday at 9 a.m. at the Cycle Ward. This is the 14th annual poker run that they've done. The theme is Cruising the Plains, and there's going to be scenic views of northern Oklahoma. So if you are a big fan of motorcycles or cars, you can bring your cars to this one as well. This is a really fun event. Or if you're a big fan of poker, also fun. It's 150 miles. The first bike leaves at 10 a.m., and the last one's going to leave at 12 p.m. There's going to have prizes, high and low hand, door prizes, and it's $20 per rider and $10 per passenger. So it's another really fun event if you're a big fan of motorcycles. After that, we have the Country Western Dance, which is this Saturday as well. It runs from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. at the Enid Moose Lodge. They will have Bobby Bennett and the Borrowed Bandits there performing. It's $10 per person, and they will have two wooden dance floors. So if you're feeling like line dancing, this is another really great event. And finally, we have the Oklahoma All-State Baseball Games this Sunday at the David Allen Memorial Ballpark, starting at 1 p.m. The OSSAA is going to hold its annual All-Star Baseball Games here for small schools at 1 p.m., medium schools at 4 p.m., and large schools at 7 p.m. And one more last thing that I just found about, out about last night is the... Blue Angels are going to be at Tinker Air Force Base, and I heard they are going to be flying over Enid, so keep an eye out for that, and that's what's happening. And the Blue Angels are representing the Navy. Yes. Where the Thunderbirds represent the Air Force. Mm -hmm. So that's impressive. So, And it's, it's good to see that David Allen Ballpark continues to be used with large events because here are the All-State Games for all the three levels of school, so that's, that's really impressive. So. Well, it's 736, and as Aaron told you a few moments ago, we're working our way to a sunny 80 degrees. It's going to be a great day to get outside and look up and see the Blue Angels or just uh, just to enjoy the time out or time out of school because it is a gorgeous day today. Well, again, Race for Jace is our theme this morning, and uh, we'll visit with our special guest in just a few moments. Uh, every once in a while, when I'm on 412 driving east or west, there's this plane, crop duster plane, that seems like it's touching the top of my car. It is so <laughs> low when they come by. Well, this time of season, weed harvest and everything, you'll probably start seeing some of these planes doing some crop dusting. We have a little video we want to show you, so be on the lookout for these low-flying planes. Welcome back, everyone. Gotta love those little planes. <laughs> Flying pretty low. Yeah. <laughs> Just wanted to thank you guys again. Thank you, Jesse, for joining us today. And we also have Jace in the chair over here as well. So he's hanging out with us today, too. There he is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> sporting that new race yeah, shirt. Yeah, sporting the nice orange, bright race shirt that they're going to have on Saturday. So kicking us off, could you tell us just a little bit more about what the Race for Jace event actually is? So we started Race for Jace back in 2013, and I was telling Steve earlier how we really got started in fundraising and just kind of having a platform was in 2012, Jace was a miracle child for the Children's Miracle Network, which is the Children's Hospital Foundation here in Oklahoma. He was Mr. October in their calendar, and that really gave us a platform to start talking about what our family had been through and what had happened with Jace. And um, so when Jace was born in 2010, we were so excited. He was our first child. Um, my, we found out he was a boy, so my husband was, you know, excitement through the roof. Um, but shortly after he was born, um, I started breastfeeding him, and he just kind of started to become ill and kind of decline in his health. And um, we would go back to the doctor, and he would say, you know, he's failing to thrive, but we really don't know why. Um, we had home health coming to our house every day with a bilirubin light because his jaundice level was so high. Um, I was feeding him as much as possible, but he kept losing birth weight and his jaundice level kept increasing. Um, he was going into liver failure and sepsis and finally at six days old, I got a call that he had tested positive on the newborn screening test for galactosemia. 
and pretty much like you guys probably thought when you saw that word, what is galactosemia? We had no family history of it. We'd never even heard of it. Um, but every baby born in the state of Oklahoma at 24 hours old, they're tested for 54 rare diseases and galactosemia wow. is one of them. It used to be called the PKU test um, and now it's called newborn screening because it encompasses so many tests. And when Jace was born, that test wasn't collected um, seven days a week. And so it took a little bit to get his test back and that's why he was so, so sick by the time he was diagnosed. So immediately we stopped breastfeeding him. We rushed him back to the hospital. He was admitted um, and he went on an all soy diet and he was put under really, really high tech bilirubin lights. And it took him about three weeks to get out of that sepsis and liver failure and kidney failure. So he had a pretty rocky first month of life. Um, obviously, thankfully, we live in a time with the internet um, because the entire time in the hospital, I was on my phone learning about galactosemia and what it was gonna mean for Jace and the rest of his life. Um, what galactosemia is, is Jace was born without the GALT enzyme, which is an enzyme in your liver that breaks down the sugars lactose and galactose but your body naturally produces galactose. So although he is on a very restricted diet, um, he was only receiving lactose through breast milk. So mm -hmm. essentially he received no nutrition for the first six days of his life, um, which is why it set him back so much. Um, and when he finally started receiving the nutrition that his body can break down, that's when he finally started recovering and thriving. Um, but like I said, his body is continuously producing galactose and it has nowhere to go. So it can raise his liver enzymes, it kind of causes a lot of side effects in his body, and the worst part of it is if it goes to his brain and it pokes um, holes in the fatty tissue in his brain. So he has a lot of side effects um, that we kind of just, every time a side effect comes up, we go see a new therapist and we try to kind of combat that with the therapy um, to keep him al always progressing. And that's the background, and let's go back to the original question of, uh, that definitely sets the background for this great event that's on Saturday. Yeah, so. And so race for Jace is, is more than just a run then. It really is, so you know, he was a miracle child, so for 2012 we toured with Children's Hospital Foundation doing different events where I got to educate people about newborn screening and about galactosemia. And so the next year in 2013, my husband and I kind of just said, you know, if if we're not gonna raise money, how do we expect anybody else to and contribute that money to research to hopefully one day have a medication, have a cure, just have more research on this disease? Um, it affects one in every 60,000 people. There's 53,000 births every year in Oklahoma, so literally less than one child a year will even be diagnosed with this disease in our state. So we started the race for Jace. My husband and I, we love running. We're very active people. Um, and we really, it's more than a run. We wanted just to do a family event where we could raise awareness about the newborn screening test and about galactosemia and just ways that, you know, kind of go beyond. I never thought about those things. I never used to think about people having food allergies or not being able to have right. something um, or children with disabilities. And now it really has just opened our eyes up to it. So. Um, as I was telling you earlier, this race really encompasses everyone. So you can, you know, push a stroller, you can push your child in a wheelchair. If, if they do better on a scooter or a bike, you know, you can do it. Really, we want everyone to participate in it and just have something to do at the race. That sounds like it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, it. we start off with a 5K, yeah. so if you're an avid runner, um, come participate in our 5K, and then we have a kids one mile run. So his baseball team will come participate every year, and kids from his school and his class, and those kids are competitive, and they're <laughs> faster at one mile than any of us, I promise you. Um, so they get to do a one mile race. Then this year we're gonna have a fireman's challenge. So my husband's a fireman with Vance Air Force Base, and. Most of the men in our family have been a fireman, and um, Jace really looks up to firemen. You know, they're heroes in our town, and so um, they're going to do a one-mile fireman's challenge in full bunk gear. Mm -hmm. um, lots of firemen around here would love to go do the stair climb in the city, and that has like a two-year wait. So um, my brother-in-law and my sister wanted to come up with a challenge for firemen here in Enid. So you can come out full bunk gear. Um, they're gonna bring fire trucks for kids to see and play on. Um, and they're gonna do the one mile. And we're actually gonna have a trophy for the fire department that crosses the finish line with at least three guys 
in full bunk gear, still at the end with their air tanks on, mm -hmm. they're going to win a trophy. And then at the end, we do a one mile walk for everybody. So that's if you're pushing a stroller, um, you know, solid, <laughs> more uh, slow paced people get to do that last yeah. one mile. Um, and we love to just educate everybody about what's going on with rare diseases and mm -hmm. research. Um, we're going to have a bounce house. So if your child just wants to come and cream. jump in the bounce house while you're doing the race, they can do that. Ice cream. We're going to have ice cream <laughs> truck. Jace wants everybody to know that Scoop's yes. ice cream will be there. Um, and we're also going to have a food truck. So if you want to come out and have breakfast, um, all my friends kind of got mad after just having ice cream for breakfast yeah. for their kids for the past several years. <laughs> so now we're going to have um, a food truck there as well so you can have breakfast. And there's a park at Crossland Park. Mm -hmm. So it really just makes it a fun morning to get your family out and do something for a great cause. Let's talk a little bit about uh, galactosemia. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there involves different number of medical visits. Doctors here in Oklahoma, do you get to stay here in Oklahoma for treatment? You don't have to go across the country for that. Tell us about how that has all impacted the family. So galactosemia comes with kind of a, a wide array of side effects. Um, about 75% of the kids have speech apraxia which Jace is a talker, but he has speech apraxia. Um, his road to communication has really been quite amazing. He started pre-K nonverbal. Um, when he started in Eden Public Schools, he knew sign language, and if he didn't know a way to communicate something, he would make up a sign. <laughs> um, so his first teacher, she would say, he's doing this, what does this mean? I don't know what this means all day. I looked up the sign and I don't know what it means. And I'm like, that's what he says to, if he wants to go outside. You know, and he wanted, he's always wanted to communicate and wanted to have conversations. And so um, we took him to a special camp when he was four and a half and it was intensive therapy, two weeks long, six to eight hours a day of speech therapy. And so that camp took him from being nonverbal to at least communicating. He learned about 10 different functional phrases to communicate with his friends. So then whenever his friends were playing outside, he would be able to say phrases like, do you want to play? want to play cars, want to play outside, and he would learn these phrases, and that morphed into what he is today. So he's done speech therapy five days a week for the last five or six years, started speech therapy at 12 months old. Um, Kathy at Hedges Speech and Hearing here has been a saint and such a blessing to us because she's stuck with him since he was less than two years old and has seen him through this journey of speech. Um, girls who have galactosemia have all the same side effects as boys, but they also have premature ovarian failure. So between the ages of actually two and eight, they lose function of their ovaries. They go into menopause. And so they have to start receiving hor um, hormone enzyme treatments. Um, and I think there's only a few, a handful of recorded cases of women with galactosemia ever being able to conceive before they went into menopause. Um, Jace also has um, it goes to occupational therapy because he has fine and gross motor delays. Um, so it was really hard for him to hold a pencil for more than a few minutes when he started school and he's really had to build up those muscles. Um, his core muscles are um, behind his age. So his bone structure is about a five and a half year old where he's eight and a half years old, um, which is actually okay because he'll just grow longer, but it kind of makes it hard to do the same functions that kids his age sure. do. He's always had to have kind of accommodations for a chair. You know, when he started using the computer at school, he, he wouldn't even be able to log in by the time the other kids were done with their computer exercise. And finally, by observation, the school said, well, he struggles just to sit in the chair. He's so small that he's just struggling to stay mm -hmm. in the chair, you know, and even to get logged in. So they would do, you know, accommodations. He got a special chair. Um, so luckily we've, we've had great schools who've really worked with us. Um, he sees occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, um, he has a lot of GI issues because people with galactosemia have such a limited diet and a very strict diet that they have to follow that, you know, they have GI function. So we always have to see a GI doctor. We see an endocrinologist for his growth issues because he's always had growth delays. Um, we're going today, later today, to see um, a neurologist because lately he's developed tremors, which most people with galactosemia, the tremors don't come till. Um, teenage years or a little bit later on, but it's just that buildup of galactose. But we've started seeing lots of tremors, and that makes it hard to, you know, write at school. And they write 
probably five hours a day and um, that's just too much for his muscles. So luckily we, we can stay in Oklahoma. We go to OU Medical Center, um, the Children's Hospital for all his doctors and he has a team of doctors who all communicate. So um, at one time we were seeing seven or eight doctors and they would talk to each other. So every visit, you know, they would kind of know what was going on. We are traveling um, to a specialist at Boston Children's Hospital this summer, who's literally the world's leading specialist on galactosemia, and he's doing some different stem cell therapy. So right now there's no treatment, no cure. Like I said, just Jace, a different side effect pops up, we go to a different therapist, and it's okay right now. He's able to, you know, attend a normal school and play baseball, but it's what's life gonna be like later on down the road when now that galactose has built up in his body for 40 years, what's life gonna look like? So the race for Jace is so critical because that money that we donate, it, 100% of it, we have sponsors who take care of our t-shirts, who take care of the cost of the race, and everything that participants give through their entry fees and donations goes to galactosemia research. Um, since it's such a rare disease, they don't get a lot of funds. Just the, in the past two years, finally, the NIH, the National Institute of Health, has started giving funds to galactosemia research, but before that, they didn't. And so in order to make a brighter future for these kids, it's up to the families, it's up to the parents to raise money and donate money. Um, and over the past six years of doing the race, we've sent um, about $55,000 to research, um, and we're hoping to send you know 10,000 more this year. Um, we have about three doctors in the world who are on pathways to different medications, and so we have to we have to continue to support them. So at 40 years old, Jace still has a great quality of life. Yeah. We're going to talk more about race for Jace, the time, the date when it all begins, and just kind of a rundown of those events here in just a moment. Again, it'll be this Saturday. But before that, we need to take a break, and uh, Kevin Brisky is going to give us an update on what's uh, going on in the Enid community over at the Stride Bank Center. Welcome back inside the Stride Bank Center. I'm the general manager, Kevin Brisky, and we are talking football, football, and more football because we have a full month of football coming up. It all starts this Saturday right here at the Stride Bank Center. Then we have games next Saturday, June 8th, the following Saturday, June 15th, three home games to round out the season for the Oklahoma Flying Aces football team. Really excited for it. If you haven't been to a game yet, you're missing out. Tickets are only $12.00. A great fun night out for the family, whether you're a football fan or not, and you're going to see some really entertaining action, uh, a ton of fun, high paced, high energy. And it's not just what's happening on the field. It's all the atmosphere and excitement off the field that uh, your family, your friends will love and get into. And really, um, the exciting thing is supporting a great team here in this community, Enid's team, uh, and the only indoor football team in Oklahoma. So come on out, check it out. There's three games for you to check it out at June 1st, June 8th. June 15th, gonna be a lot of fun, I promise you. After that, we have Casey and the Sunshine Band coming on August 29th, really excited for that show. Tickets start at only $39. That is gonna be one big night of partying, fun, and dancing. You don't wanna miss it. Uh, the great music from the 70s, Casey and the Sunshine Band. They bring a huge band with them, behind them as well, so it's great music, great entertainment. That one's August 29th. Then on October 20th, we have We Will Rock You, a musical by Queen. That's something completely different than we've ever done here before. Uh, if you want to check that one out, that one's going to be really cool as well. And then on December 12th, we have the Isaacs Christmas Concert, that presented by the Baptist Foundation of Oklahoma. It's uh, going to be a really cool evening there and a great way to celebrate the holiday. So we have a lot going on here at the Stride Bank Center. And if everything goes to plan, which we know how that works sometimes, but if it all goes to plan, we are going to have some more announcements coming up in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully some more fun and exciting stuff coming right here to the Stride Bank Center. For tickets, 855-TIXENID, stridebankcenter.com, or just stop by and see us, second floor of Convention Hall. Until next time, we'll send it back into the studio with you, Steve. Thank you, Kevin. And second floor of the Stride Bank Center, we will be there. We'll go look for Kevin. Okay, it's 7.54 on this Thursday morning, May 30th. One more day of May, and then we're off to June. Incredible.
Yep. So the forecast for today looks like what? It is going to be beautiful today. It's going to be sunny, high of 80 later on today. Currently sitting at the low at 52, but it is going to be sunny. We finally get a break from the thunderstorms and the rain, so I could not be <laughs> any more excited about that. And if you look at the three-day forecast, maybe the thunderstorms <laughs> come back, but maybe not. But this is Oklahoma. You never know. But it's still going to warm up, be pretty nice. The splash pads are open. The pool is open. Uh, anytime you get to the 80s, you can be out and play in the water a little bit. So you see the low 80s for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Good chance to mow, get the yard in shape, and uh, even go to baseball games. College World Series is going on in Oklahoma City. So a lot of things are happening, so I'm glad the weather's going to cooperate. If you're able to stay with us in the next five minutes, have the opportunity to talk to Miss Rodeo, Oklahoma. Cody Smalligo, I believe. I'm trying to remember. I just kept calling her Miss Rodeo, <laughs> but just a precious young woman representing the state of Oklahoma. Great interview with her and talking about she's from uh, the Sky Took area and just north of Tulsa, I believe, and uh, just a great visit with her. And that's coming up at 8 o'clock this morning. Yes, and now Charlotte has two, I think she said eight-week-old kittens named Nala and Simba, just in time for the new Lion King What's movie. the names? Nala and Simba from okay. the Lion King. Okay. Yes, so take it away, Charlotte. <laughs> Good morning! It's officially kitten season here at the shelter and we've got lots and lots of kittens waiting for their forever homes. Today we have these two in Pen 6. They're about eight weeks old and they're looking for a family of their own. So come by to the shelter and get a kitten today. Kitty, 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 kitty. Yeah. <laughs> They're so cute. Yeah, they are. Oh. I, d I don't know if I've ever seen a kitten that's not cute. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like a puppy. Don't think it exists. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> they're they, so cute. Puppies are always cute too, and then they get big cuter sometimes. <laughs> so anyway, 249-4910, everybody's done a great job uh, through the years that we've been on uh, Good Morning Enid uh, of uh, adopting pets. So keep up the good work. Thank you for that. Yes. Now back to a couple more questions for you. Back to the Race for Jace event. What time, what day, entry fee? Could you just give us a little snapshot of what yes, one it is? Yes, so it is this Saturday, so just two days away. And it all starts at 9 a.m. at Crossland Park. But if you want to register, you can still register day of at 8.15. That'll open up. We'll have the Enid High School cross-country team there helping us with registration and getting set up. But come out, register for any of the 5K, the one mile. Um, if you're a firefighter, get some of your buddies together and come out and um, just come enjoy the morning. It all usually goes from about 8.15 and then we're done by 11 a.m. Um, so just come enjoy the morning with us. It's $25 for the 5K day of and then $20 for the rest of the races, um, $10 for the Fireman's Challenge. The t-shirt order's already been put in, but I do have extra t-shirts, so if you'd like a t-shirt, still stop by and see if you can get that. Just come enjoy the morning with your family there's and a, learn a little a bit. The t -shirt. Yeah, Jace is modeling it. Can you show Jay, him the t-shirt, Jace? Jace, can you kind of turn to the side a little bit so we can see some of the sponsors back there? Keep on turning, <laughs> keep on turning. Just walk around in circles. <laughs> do it one more time, real slow. There you go. It's a good looking peach looking orange color. It's, it's sunset orange. Sunset orange. Okay, not just orange. Sunset. <laughs> we are cowboy fans around our oh, house. Okay, okay. <laughs> so if I say boomer sooner, that doesn't no. mean anything to you at all. Okay, all no. right. <laughs> Real quick, Jesse, uh, if folks, can they just show up Saturday for the event at 9 o'clock if they're not going to participate and just simply write a check? And if, and if they would, how would they write the check to? So Race for Jace, we have um, a, a fund and everything set okay. up for them at Bank of Kremlin. And that's happened before. Somebody's just been in the park at the dog park and walked over and asked wow. what's going on this morning. And we've told them and they've wrote a check. So like we said, 100% of what is donated or given through the fees goes to Galactosemia Research just to give Jace and these kids a brighter future. We're kind of dedicating this year's race to a little baby girl from Pakistan who died um, two weeks ago because she wasn't diagnosed in time. Okay. Um, and I was friends with her family through um, our Facebook groups with galactosemia. And I mean, it's just sad that that's still happening on a disease that can be pre pre prevented. So come see us on Saturday morning. Saturday, race yes, for Jace. We'll, be, we'll all be there. So have a wonderful Thursday. Make it a great day. Thank you, Jesse. Thanks.